Hi, this is Mark Keen from Keen Engineering. Um, my brother and I, we were out prospecting this weekend and we were using one of our little P90 pumps. This is actually the same pump I used for about two or three years. We've never had to touch the pump, but something happened uh, at the end of our test on this last Saturday. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick inspection on the pump. And I believe since we actually have water leaking out around the shaft, I'm pretty confident that most likely we gone ahead and blown the pump seal. We're probably going to change it just as a precaution since we have it apart. Um, but again, I've had this pump for about probably three or four years. Um, and another thing too is a lot of customers who use their pumps like in a saltwater condition, we almost recommend that you would take your pump, completely disassemble it and reassemble it and maybe use some anti-seize on the hardware so you can get it apart. So it comes apart later when it's, when it's time to do some service. But I have a feeling that uh, we might have some gravel stuck in the impeller or we, or maybe just a really bad blown seal. So that's why I'm gonna do a, a quick inspection on the pump here. Pretty simple to do. You, I think the main tool you need is probably a 3 16 Allen wrench. That's what I have my hands here. Okay, so there's the impeller. And I'll tell you what, if you wanna come closer, um, you can see that I was pumping a lot of sand and gravel. Watch your fingers. You can tell that I was pumping a lot of sand and gravel to the, the pump because I can see a lot of scoring here and I can see a lot of scoring on the outside. Now that doesn't hurt the pump at all. In fact, believe it or not, a little bit almost helps to a certain point. But uh, again, you don't want to let that happen because that'll shorten the life of your pump seal. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to remove the impeller. So I'm getting ready to pull the pump up to remove the impeller, but I noticed there are rocks stuck in one of the veins of the impeller. And that would definitely account why we had a performance drop while we're out in the field. So we're gonna go and remove the impeller next. And you know, probably the simplest way to do it is uh, just take a mallet to it. And it's a bit, you need a big soft headed mallet. Go ahead and run in, pop the impeller off for us. Pulls the engine a little bit and he just smacks it. Yep, and he broke it loose. Okay, again, let me unscrew this here. And yep, you can see, I can see the gravel in there. So probably just I can pick it out with a screwdriver, but it looks like it's kind of stuck in there. Here, go ahead and hold that for me. really jammed in there. Okay, so I can see the impellers clear all the way through now. Okay. So if you look here, this is your pump seal system. You've got a white ceramic seal, which is a very fine, polished, um, very smooth surface. And I use porcelain because you can get it so uh, precisely smooth. And this is a black carbon face. And behind this, there's a rubber jacket and a, and a spring. You can actually see I can compress that, that pump seal. So when you tighten, when you attach your impeller and you tighten up the, when you tighten this up, it, the, the two surfaces come together and then it squeezes the black carbon face, pushes it in approximately an eighth inch on this particular pump. But now as with a closer inspection, I can see we do have some scoring on the face of this black carbon face. You typically won't see it here on the, the white ceramic, but you see sometimes a crack or some grooves cut into here. Doesn't look too bad, but since I have it apart, I'm gonna go ahead and change it out. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the pump apart. Sometimes these, removing these can be problematic depending on how, what kind of water conditions, how often you use it, how much corrosion you have inside the system. Okay, so far so good. It's not always this easy, trust me. I've had lots of headaches. Sometimes unscrewing the impeller can be a real can be very problematic and we have to do things like uh, keep the engine turning over. I've even gone ahead as far as to maybe remove the spark plug on the engine and filling the, taking the piston, taking to the uh, bottom position and filling the chamber with some, you know, like quarter inch nylon rope. And surprisingly, that when the piston tries to go back up, it's unable to because it can't, it can't compress the rope enough. And that's, and 
that's the best way to lock this engine up. There's tons of ways to do it. You can take the recoil housing off. You can uh, take the, use the rope trick. Uh, but you know, using that mallet usually works pretty good for us. You got to be careful just not to hit it so hard that you can bend or break that inner shaft. When he puts these together, too, sometimes there's a little silicone in these uh, caps here. I don't see any today, but sometimes he puts it in there, depending on where we're selling it to. Just keeps reducing the... Uh... Okay, so here's the, the back plate. You can see the shaft and the shaft extension here. And again, yeah, I see, you know, if you can, can you get close? I see, I do see some scoring on the seal and I see some uneven wear pattern. So I believe my seal is on its way out. So let's take it back there and uh, pop it out and put a new one in. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and change the, the pump seal now. To press it out, if I was out on the field, I would just flip this over, put it on a couple blocks of wood, hit that with a hammer just to push it through. But I have the right tools here, so I might as well do it. So I'm just gonna take a simple socket with my press, kind of get it lined up and pop it through. So there's the seal and there's my socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, get the first seal now. Okay, so basically when you order one of your water pump kits, it comes in three pieces. You got the tool to press the seal in, you have the new replacement pump seal. And when you order, you have to specify what kind of pump so we can give you a free O-ring. So, Renee, let's go ahead and put the scene together. So, go ahead and crack your seal open. Now, I'll show you here. You got two parts. This is the white ceramic seal here, the rubber backing on it. And this is a stainless steel backed. And you can see we have a much cleaner uh, face with no erosions in it. So, Renee, go ahead and do your silicone job on the back of that seal. He just puts a little bit of silicone around the corner of the seal. You have a rag on your waist all the time. <laughs> now it's really important that that back plate is supported evenly when you put the new seal in. So what he's going to do now, he's going to take this tool here, which comes with the kit. He's going to press it over the seal. Now you could easily pound this in with a mallet if you had to. Of course, we all have to be resourceful when we're out in the field. But since I'm in the shop, I do have the proper tools and he presses that seal in, so basically it stops. Make sure it's even all the way around. Okay, so now he's gonna pull the, the tool out. So it looks, looks like it's all flush in there. Let's flip it over, look at the other underneath side. Nice and even on the back too. Cool, we're set. Okay, let's go put it back together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull the old white ceramic seal out of the back of the impeller, okay? And I gotta put the new one in. Again, you, you always wanna do kind of a quick visual inspection to make sure there's no chips or everything looks nice and clean and smooth. So I gotta get it nice and wet here and then push that evenly into the back of the impeller. <clears throat> so a little bit of friction involved, it holds it in place. You kind of want to just make sure everything is flat and smooth. Okay, so let's put the back plate back on. Okay, I just wanted to point out that the uh, the bolt on the left side is the metric thread. That's the one that goes into the back plate that holds it securely to the engine. The one on the right is a quarter 20 thread, and that's the one that holds the housing to the back plate itself. So in other words, this one here goes into the motor. Okay, go ahead and snug that down.
you can see he's torquing him down. He's not over tight. He's just getting him good and hand tight. Okay, cool. So let's slap the impeller on. Now when you tighten the, remember the impellers, they screw on clockwise and they unscrew counterclockwise. So he's turning the impeller to tighten it in a clockwise motion. Yeah, it just takes a screwdriver and just puts a little bit of pressure, not too much. That, that's probably enough for it. It wouldn't go anywhere. Now what's interesting, you don't really need to tighten it up even that much because these, the impeller, since they um, they tighten clockwise, and as, they, as the engine turns, it spins it counterclockwise. So the impellers are always somewhat uh, self-tightening. Okay, so we have all four housing bolts now? Okay, cool, so let's slap that on. Do you put silicone on that? Yeah. You do? Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Renee. So Renee is putting a little silicone in each one of the bolt holes again, just ensuring that no leakage comes out of the pump. You don't really need to put silicone, you know, on the O-ring or anything else. It wouldn't hurt, but it doesn't really help. The O-ring does a pretty good seal on these things. Some of the older pumps we used to build like this, we had a big, thick, quart gasket. That worked pretty good as well. This is just a little more newer, modern type pump. And the funny thing is about these pumps, people don't realize that they, they spin up pretty fast. I think this pump turns at all close to 7,500 RPMs, but that's why you get that extreme pressure out of a little pump. But I really do like this pump. You know, it does close to 100 gallons a minute. It has like 160 foot ahead. It has extreme pressure. You know, a lot of people don't realize a pump like this will outperform most three and four horsepower pumps, especially if you get into like a semi trash pump or one of these garbage, you know, imports. This thing is built to the tilt, high performance. You got tight tolerances in the pump, um, and it's just really super high performance. So anyway, that kind of gives you an idea, you know, just to summarize the, the whole thing as we, you know, we were out testing this weekend and we, I've had this pump I've used on and off for about the last, I don't know, two, two to four years. And uh, we kept, we pumped a lot of sands. We're only in about three inches of water and we dig, dug a hole, put a pan down in it, but the, the, the pan just kept filling with sand because the water was so shallow. So we're going to go out this weekend, but I wanted to make sure I had a fresh uh, pump seal. so. I uh, wouldn't have any issues. And also we had a performance issue drop and you saw previously where I had to pull a couple rocks out that was actually stuck in the impeller. So anyways, that being said, uh, I hope this helps you. If you have any issues with your pump, you can service yourself out in the field. And they're, they're, as you can tell, they're pretty easy to work with. We only really needed uh, one tool for this particular pump, which is kind of cool. I think it was the 316 Allen wrench. And, uh, and if you have the pump seal kit, you got that fancy socket thing that fits over the seal when it presses the seal and it does a nice even job. Otherwise, you have to have a really elaborate set of sockets to be able to fit over the seal just properly. So, we're gonna pull it over, make sure it turns over okay, we didn't bind anything up. No, just walk on the other side and pull the engine over. That, that's fine. We're just gonna check it now. So it pulls over easy, like it should. Okay, so we're ready to go on the field and play with it again. All right, Renee, thanks for your help. Okay, bye.